So it's wild card today. A wild card, as I like to say, can be anything. It can even be nothing. But it's certainly not nothing today. This is Star Fox, aka Star Wing, for the Super Nintendo. I played this game way in my infancy. I really enjoyed it then. I'm not sure if it still holds up so well today, but nostalgia will certainly carry it for me if nothing else. I got put into the mood for this game because of the weekly one-shot Descent. I don't have any nostalgia for Descent, but it certainly reminded me of this. Not really in the gameplay, more in the visuals, but still, I wanted to get back into it. I actually streamed this game before. It was a Two Hours of Hell, and I just checked. That was a Two Hours of Hell back in 2014. That's an aeon ago. That might even be the year that I started streaming. Jinx, it was a long time ago. Um, so, this seems good enough a reason to jump back into it. So we're going to run this game. We're going to do all the endings. There are four of them, to my knowledge. We're going to start with the easiest and work our way up. So, let's get into it. Unlike the N64 version of Star Fox, aka Lilat Wars, you, uh, you pick which direction you're going in this one. So I think the center is the easiest. The top path is the middle difficulty, the lower is the third and hardest difficulty. So, start out with the first one. Let's go. There's a black hole that you can take that I think puts you on a route for the uh, middle difficulty after doing the easy one, but we'll, uh, we'll just play the easy one straight. For now, at least. This looks awful, and that has nothing to do with me connecting Star Fox with JJ. Why would you think of JJ when you look at Star Fox? Dread to imagine. You know, I never made out what he said as a kid, and even now I struggle with it. He's saying emergency, something, something, prepare to launch. Okay, time for the Canaria theme. It's been remixed a bajillion times, and I still think it's really good. So, we are Star Fox. I don't really know much of the plot of this. Didn't really care about it at all. But we are a fox. We have a motley crew of mercenary pilots. And for some reason, we fight on the side of good. Although, the way I played the game on the Nintendo 64, we fight on the side of our wallet. I cannot believe I missed the first power-up there. It's okay, we don't need power-ups where we're going. Which is straight to the end. So, it's a very simple game. You fly around, you're on the rails though. You've got pretty limited control of what to, what you're actually going to be flying around into and through. But, dodge the oncoming attacks, shoot the things that are in your way. Oh, couldn't be simpler. And then at the end of each stage, you have a boss to take care of. The boss has weak spots, you shoot them, all is well. Continue on. As simple as games can be. I wonder if you can fly through this. There we go. Don't crash into things, it hurts a lot. We've got our own health in the bottom left, we've got our boost in the bottom right, which is pretty useless in this game. Boosting was far more important in the Nintendo 64 version. We've also got Nova Bombs on our bottom right, I can fire one off here. Boom! Destroys most things on the screen. I forget if it hurts boss as much at all. Teammates angry about noob fox kill stealing? They do! I really like that in the game, that your your teammates would react to what you do. They're, they're slick. I mean, we could help them, we could also not, but... Well, we're being, we're being the best fox here, so down it goes. Something that I quite like about this level is that... Playing on easy mode, you can see all the parts being moved around to assemble the boss that you face on hard mode. And if you go and play on hard mode, you see them moving around the pieces for uh, creating the boss on easy mode. It really is the deepest lore. I forget, can this thing hurt you if you fly too high? No, no. This attack carrier appeared in the N64 version. If you flew too high when he approached, he would smash into you. Wait, is this the attack carrier? Yeah, it is. On hard mode, Falco even says that he's gonna go and take care of the attack carrier. I think I fired prematurely there. There we go. So, down it goes. I mean, it's a, it's a joke boss. It's easy mode. It's gonna be joke difficulty. Down it goes. Easy peasy. And of course back in this day we still hadn't figured out that just flickering the screen constantly was murder on the eyes. 
Nothing in capture like that quite like the dragon fight in Mega Man 2. Speaking of Mega Man, I got a little bit of a wager with Marek. If I beat his god-awful custom map, Silicius, he's gonna have to beat Mega Man 2 and 3. He offered to throw in Mega Man 1 as well, but I'm not that sadistic. So I'm gonna give that a go, probably next week. This game makes me feel proud to be British, says Minge. I don't know how or why. Good luck. So, into the asteroid belt. This place is a bit of a bane for me. It forces this control, but you can force your way out of it, if I can remember which button to press for it. There we go, select. I don't actually like that cockpit view, I prefer to be behind the ship here. Still, it's pretty cool that it had all that. Gotta remember, this game came out in 1990... Oh jeez, when was it? 1992? I'll go with that. Was it the first game I ever owned? I can't remember. Cannot remember. Me and my brothers uh, shared a lot of our games, so it was hard to say whose game was really whose. I mean, we'd all get games for Christmas and birthday. Well, games. We'd get a game. Family wasn't that rich. But I seem to think this one was mine. My brother would have got either Street Fighter or Killer Instinct. Well, my middle one. Older brother? Ah, he could buy his own games. So you got these asteroids. Brown ones you can destroy. Silver ones you cannot. Silver ones with the creepy faces on them, which I don't think appear on easy mode. Those fly right into you. I think you get something you fly between these? Yeah, that's... Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, I guess we're doing this just with single laser then. I got shot off course of that um, that power up there. I should have not just dual lasers, but plasma lasers by now, but no, it is not to be. I think it's because I inverted the controls. I prefer, I prefer inverted controls generally, but I've got a lot of ancient muscle memory telling me press up to go down because I was too stupid as a kid to figure out how to change the controls. You press select to change them, but even back then the convention of the select button was bizarro. Yeah, I mean, I was going straight for that power up and then just missed it entirely. Incredible. You only keep the power ups if you keep your life, though. If you die, you go straight back to single laser here. And single laser is a bit pathetic. I know it's nostalgia. It 100% is just nostalgia, but I really like the visuals of this game. Just those really early forays into into 3D, especially on a console. So I forget this boss's name, but you just destroy the glowy bits. He's trying to ram me there. Destroy the glowing bits and uh, then shoot his center to death and that'll be the end of him. I mean, Jings, if I can have nostalgia for Draken, I can have nostalgia for damn near everything. So, simple enough, just shoot it to death while bar barrel rolling. If you barrel roll, you can stop most attacks from hurting you at all. There are some attacks, most notably, that come in at the hardest difficulty that are unbarrel rollable. Wing, 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 Derbert. Don't, uh, don't look at the score. It's irrelevant. <laughs> Gotta say, my favorite boss in this game would have to be the reactor. Unfortunately, we get to fight it twice. And I I think one of the times we fight it is here in the Space Armada. I feel like we fight it in, in uh, Sector Z as well. I remember my friend Brad renting this in elementary school. I didn't like it, says Gobbo. All I can do is shake my head. You can't hear it, but it is shaking. Good luck. Is it going to force cockpit view again? Yes it is. It's also going to force some awesome music. I'm all game for that. 
This game had a lot of big words that I sure as sugar didn't understand. Okay, finally! I got myself some twin blasters. Okay, give me that as well. Extra life? I cannot even conceive a world in which I need extra lives on easy mode. But better to grab it than somehow get myself killed. So if you've got a keen eye, you might notice that the frame rate is really, really bad, as the developers no doubt intended. I thought about looking into a way to play this game on uh, like 60 frames a second, which would probably make the game insanely hard and run four times faster, but I didn't. Maybe someday I will. Right, so don't we go through this thing? Yeah, we do. And then you gotta learn how to dodge. It's not hard. Up, down, side to side. Oh, no thank you. You get the shield ability, which means you can actually just ram into things with relative impunity. I think you can still die uh, with shield, but you take enough hits and it fades away. I'd rather not have it. it gets rid of the cool look of your ship. And yeah, Slippy always needs help. I can't remember if Falco ever needs help, but Slippy sure does all the time. He was never popular. Even before he got a voice, he was just a waste of space. Way you go, go. Ah, a lot of things flying into me. That could be a problem soon. If you get enough things hitting your wings, your wings go kaput. Now I just have to repeat everything that I just did because I flew too far to the right there and I didn't actually go inside the attack carrier bit that I was meant to. The whole point of this level is to destroy the energy cores inside each of these, but it gives me a nice shot to take this thing out with a note bomb. Farewell. Oh, okay, Nova Bomb doesn't hit those things. The more you learn. I didn't play this game on easy mode much as a uh, as a kid, so a lot of this is a lot of this is new to me. Well, not new, but long, long time since I played it. Was it 1992? What year was this? It's kind of hard to read chat playing a game like this, though. the good luck snake, although I would hate that I'd hate to think that any of this would come down to luck. I should have this. Got no reason not to. fun. The great graphics for its age. I'm not really sure this was ever considered that great. Came out pretty early in the Super Nintendo's life though, so going from the NES to this was really something. Introduces you to these doors where you shoot them to uh, change the direction with the that they open up or down. That's going to be a pretty big thing when we hit Macbeth at the end of the game. Because they got the walls that are going to turn around. Whoa. Maybe I do need that luck after all. Don't worry about all the hits. I get all my health back at the end of each level. Oh, this was so cool, though.
It was even cooler in the 64 version of the game because you could actually you would actually be the one making those movements. It wouldn't just be made for you. So you fly around the reactor. You got to shoot these beam things, which, if you time your shots well, are actually going to open it up. You can even go around to the other side and shoot them as they come. And down you go, go. Easy peasy. And as it struggles trying to render all these explosion sprites, oh, you can feel the seconds per frame. Oh, what a time it was to be alive seeing the game's early foray into 3D. And amazing how well Mario 64 ended up pulling it off. Star Fox SNES didn't age well visually, but the soundtrack slaps. Yeah, the soundtrack still gets remixed. It's pretty damn good. Visually, yeah, product of its time. But thankfully, I have enough nostalgia to make this feel really good for me. Be sure to use your retros. My retros. Good luck. Did Sergeant Pepper know this game would be a retro classic? So I really like this level, because you get to fight giant spiders. Well, one particular giant spider is the boss. Unfortunately, you only see this level on easy mode, so it's your only, ch only chance to go and see it. So I didn't know the word fiend as a toddler, so I was thinking that Peppy was saying watch out uh, you friend. I was like, why is he calling the enemy his friend? I could not understand it. There we go. Finally got myself the... what did he call them? Twin blasters? Some kind of super upgraded weapon. This is as strong as your regular attack gets. And you will lose it if you die or if you lose one of your wings. Always thought it was a cool thing that your wings could come off, and particularly nasty in the 64 version, where Andros would chew your wings off. Always seemed a bit savage to me. See, he's saying, get lost, you fiend, but my childhood brain couldn't process the word fiend, so I thought he was saying friend. And much as you would like to destroy your compatriots in this game, Sadly, they are indestructible in this. It wasn't until Star Fox 64 that your allies could actually take friendly fire damage. Speaking of taking damage, that is exactly what I'm doing here. I am watching my aim, Peppy. He doesn't have that mentor sound or aura to him in this game. He didn't get that until the 64 one. Right, where are we going? Never do anything right. Give me that Nova. <laughs> Once again, Slippy's in trouble. Nothing lucky about the refill. Okay, here it comes. I like this boss a lot. Don't really have a good explanation why. It's just shoot him till he dies, but... I like the idea of fighting this big dancing spider as your enemy. And I think you hit his top to deal damage? I can't actually remember how you hurt him, but you have to go low or else you're going to get sliced apart by his spinny bits. <laughs> A lot of the monsters just seem like they're awfully, awfully happy and like to dance. That's what I'm getting out of it. Go high or else he cuts you. If it sounds like I'm remembering any of this, I'm not. I'm just making it up as I go along. Don't remember him spouting out lava, though. And last leg goes, and then just shoot him till he's dead. Go full cyber demon on him. There we go. 
traded like a great sword user, but he goes down and I stay alive. I got so much beef with dancing in sector, it cost me a few seconds on my current PB. What do you speedrun this game? Speedrunning a rail shooter, that's uh, a bit of a Chad move. Ah, see, on chicks, you were born into having no limitations by being a member of the PC Master Race. But limitations breed innovations. I really wanted a good gaming PC as a kid. Best thing I had was the school's throwaway old PC, which I could just barely get running Dungeon Keeper with no sound. Bad times. I mean, good times, but bad times. I remember a long time ago, my parents said, what do you want for Christmas? I said, I want to be able to run Dungeon Keeper. They said, we, we can't do that. I remember I saw the PlayStation 1. I thought, the PlayStation 1, it, it uses games that come on, on CDs. Maybe I could put in Dungeon Keeper and play it on the PlayStation. Didn't work that way. I never knew what those blue things coming out of certain things you shoot wear, but upon reflection it's probably the pilot ejecting. Ejecting in space is going to burn up in the atmosphere. Nice. <laughs> Stop flying in front of me then if you don't want to get shot. And for the fourth or fifth time, Slippy demands our help. You could save around 20 plus seconds of good lag reduction on Canaria alone. Yeah. Lag is what slaughters you in this game. Which is why there should be a category for lagless play. I'm only... I'm, I'm going to assume there is some way to play this game with no lag. Or even at 60 FPS. Fixed. Would certainly make it a whole lot harder. Mind your own business. The Tsun Tsun of Falco. I guess if you speedrun this game, you have to really pick your shots because you shoot enough and I think it slows the game down. So this is the easy modo boss thing. I think it splits into certain ones and then you have to hit the right one. Do I remember that right? I know, it has been eight years since I last played this. Shouldn't be too hard to kill, especially with the... What's he doing? I forget, does he charge you? No, he just uh, creates his fakes. But, easily taken out, and he's going to retreat down to Venom. We're going to hunt him down and kill him. I'd be hard-pressed to call this the best game on the SNES. You can beat this in an afternoon blind. At which point it doesn't really have a lot of replay value. But this music... Got this everything. It's a bit of a shame that all the worlds look like they're made up of children's building blocks. Okay, that was a lot of damage on my right wing. Let's try not to try not to rough it up anymore. You don't visually see the health bars of your wings, so I don't know exactly what causes them to break off, but enough damage and they certainly do snap off like pretzels. I don't actually know if that hurts your handling in any way. But importantly, it stops you from using your upgraded weapons. So I'm shooting these things to change which way they go around, otherwise you just get smacked with giant blocks there. Get lost, you friend. Yeah, better thank me, Peppy. So there's no course correction based on your allies staying alive here like it was in 64. It was such a great thing there, as, as early as Conaria, saving Falco's life and then... Taking out the uh, 
the special boss that puts you on the harder route. So cool. And yeah, hella lag for these things. Wings are five. Whoa. Let's maybe read that when we don't have things coming our way. Wings are five hits apiece. Before they break, health carries level to level, only resets to full when you pick up a... Really? So if you damage your wings for four hits in one level, they'll snap off in one hit in the next? That's really cool. Oh, I've got an opportunity to learn everything I wanted to know but didn't about this game. Sadly, the game is really easy, so there's, there's not much to, uh, to benefit from knowing more. Oh, look at that. Final boss before... No, wait, no, he's not done. He's faking me out. And I wonder where I got all my ideas about faking out. I love that growing health bar there as well. He's still a joke, though. Shoot him and he dies. And he actually dies pretty quickly. Why don't I find out if this bomb actually works on him? Ooh, it does. Cool. Let's try that again, then. Huh. It even works when he's uh, jumping towards you. Cool. Can I finish him off with this? I didn't use Nova Bombs much before because they're really not that good, but let's see. Amazing. My son still plays Final Fantasy VI. He's screaming it. Oh, streaming it for his friends these days. Streaming's so good, it's... Uh... I grew up doing a lot of couch playing of a game, even a single player game. So, a bunch of you, one game, and you kind of just take turns, and if you're not the one playing, you enjoy watching it. And streaming has really brought that to fruition again, except it's a much bigger couch. Alright, Andros, time to die. Your R-Wings have no chance against me. <laughs> Looks a little more monkey-like in this game. So, time to face the wall. And he keeps laughing at you as you shoot him. Now, try as you may, you cannot enter his mouth. He just breathes in and then spits at you. He doesn't actually hurt you with that. Although if these things hit you, they can certainly hurt. And I find them very hard to dodge, because it just becomes a wall of blocks. Anyway, shoot his eyes out and Andros is dead. Again, in the N64 version, oh, they did a good they did a good spin on this one, because if he breathes in, he can eat you and chew you and spit you out wingless. It's not a good deal for you. Don't get eaten by Andros. So down he goes, out comes his block, and then I think you just... Tell him to eat bomb and shoot him and away he goes. Not a difficult game. Although the Super Nintendo would certainly heat up trying to render all of this. Fun fact, most speedrunners beat Andros on level 1 in a single stuck animation. There are four runners that have beaten it before the stuck animation ever happens. S oh, suck animation. Ah. It's going to take a lot of precise shooting, because any any block he spits out of his eyes is going to tank one of your shots. He's the scat man when you shoot him there. Are you really comfy with the idea that we're all sharing your sofa? I've got a really comfy sofa, so would be my privilege to share it. And have done so on occasion. What's there been two or three fan gatherings here, physically, in the past? Those are all back when I worked at Paradox, though. Well, is there going to be another PDX Con this year? Wouldn't be unthinkable to, uh, to host something here again. I have a simple rule, though. You're free to stay at mine. I don't charge any rent. 
But I do charge you a dance on the dance mat. You're gonna have to show us what you're made of if you want to stay the night here. Okay, this is all fun and games, but uh, let's just turbo our way through it. Do we really need to see the credits? I don't think we do. Again, just speed through it. You can speed read if you want to. Yeah, we fought the Armada, the Meteor, the Venom, the other Venom, and then Andros. How do I get out of this? I don't think there's any easy way to get back to main menu. Does it just end on a game over when all this is done? Apologies for the horrible sound of speeding up. There we go, 92%. Goodness, if I was 92% in real life, just imagine what I'd be. Okay, now you always had to reset your console at this point. Mm. Well, let me just reach over and hit the uh, reset button on my genuine SNES. There we go. I would literally dislocate both my legs if I tried DDR. Well, look, if that's a price too much for you to pay, Goosey, don't bother coming around to my place. It is tradition. Alright, that was just the one ending, and the easiest one. Let's go for level two. No matter which path you take, you always start out in Canaria, but Canaria is always a little different. Last resort is to counterattack Venom. Good luck. So, how, how did this whole war come about? Why are you getting bested by one horrible planet's output? I think the whole thing about Venom is that Andros was exiled there and it's just an unlivable planet. And he puts together this massive armada to take you out. It's kind of like the Dr. Wily of Star Fox. Just put uh, Andros and Dr. Wily in charge. It's going to be amazing for the GDP. The Star Fox box art always makes me uneasy. Oh yeah, creepy fox doll. I should have gotten the animated version that looks at you every now and then. We got a different uh, and considerably better box art in the PAL region. It features uh, Fox and the whole gang. And it looks a lot less creepy. That's the important part. Muscle memory keeps kicking in and making me uh, press up to go down and down to go up. Some muscle memory is just too engraved in me to uh, to easily get rid of. Are you gonna drop me a bomb? No, okay. There's another piece of the attack carrier up there. I forget what you fight on on middle difficulty. Is it the uh, the same thing as easy? I think the attack carrier is only on hard. But yeah, you can see just how much the game is lagging here. You reduce this lag, you're gonna have a much faster run of the game. As usual, Slippy needs our help. It was such a cathartic moment when he got absolutely slapped out of the air in Star Fox 64. Unfortunately, you can stop him from getting slapped out of the air, and double unfortunately, you go and rescue him if he does. With the tank, no less. Did anybody actually enjoy the tank sections in Star Fox 64? With the exception of that really cool train level. Was that Macbeth? I think it was Macbeth. Thread the needle, get the bomb. Shooting that train apart. Oh, it was so good. Having him yell that he can't stop it. Blowing up the arms, Steepo. Mmm. Yeah, 64. 64 is good stuff. I think I ran that as well. When in the world would I have ran that? I hate that desert planet tank level. Oh god, yeah. And I think again, if I just explode you, yeah, <laughs> same as same as easy mode. Every bit is disappointing. 
because you can just completely negate his attacks if you just constantly twirl and then you just shoot him to death. There's a real possibility that I lose a life or two on medium route though. I think, what is it, Sector Y? Or something like that. It's got a lot of jellyfish monsters that do me in, if I remember well. Fun fact, the lag makes people not notice. The speed of moving your ship around is determined by a value called velocity. The formula to determine velocity is a hyperbolic algorithm. The ship slowly ramp up to max speeds, quickly gets to max. The ship gets an odd sort of weight. Hmm. You're right, the lag doesn't make me notice. Good luck. Twirl... Twirl gives you a lot of iframes. If you're twirling, and even for a little bit after your twirl, incoming attacks, most incoming attacks, but not collisions, uh, just bounce harmlessly off of your ship. So if anybody shoots a laser at you, some of the ones that you shoot, or they shoot those those round, fiery ball-looking things, they bounce off. But things like lava spouts, they they won't they won't bounce back. And as I said, collision. So I couldn't twirl and ram myself into these blocks, for example. There's no justice in this world. Slippy, you're not getting your dindins. There we go. And I'm not getting my extra life. I missed that. God, the lag. It's really cool having to dodge all these, though. Pretty scary, I thought, as a kid. I felt like those those guys that saw a moving train for the first time in a cinema and ran away. There we go. Get these obnoxiously loud guns here. On reflection, I think I should have not gotten it. Maybe I'll maybe I'll avoid getting these on the hard route because just the noise of shooting these are a little unpleasant. Then again, some of the oh, okay, well that was painful. Then again, some of the some of the bosses get a little a little nasty on hard mode, especially Fortuna. I don't have the best memories of Fortuna. Out of the way, Falco. We've got these big origami monsters to fight here. The developers missed a trick by not spelling out something very crude with these floating letters coming at you. That hurts a bit. Didn't even mean to save you there, Peppy. It just kinda happened. Alright, let's not mess around. Feeling a little low on health here. I'm not just feeling it, I am. They do, but in Japanese, what, TX, TX, TX? Oh, this is the same boss as we fought in easy mode again. I wasn't aware that it was so... so happy on recycling on, uh... on medium difficulty. Well, he's not entirely the same. He is throwing bigger, badder things at me. Whew! I got a little hairy. He was shooting at missiles. You certainly can't roll those away. What are you getting at, Acronymous? You're just jealous of my passport at work. enjoying Titania. I can't remember it. Maybe I'm thinking of a, a different level. Oh, so this is Corneria's resource world. Retake the weather... Yeah, that's what I liked about it. it had the weather control thing. 
I seem to recall young Jake just avoiding the weather control unit so I could fly through this stage for a long time, enjoying the music. Given the hits that I took in the previous level, and what we now know about the health of those carrying over, I can totally see one of my wings snapping off in this level. Oh, doubly so if I smash into the ground there. Got your back slip. Can you fly under these? Yeah, you can. Sweet. Mini versions of the uh, spider bots. Ouch. Okay, I think this is where the weather control system is. Yeah, there it is. There we go. It tempts you with the pickup for your, your wings, but we've got a job to do. Yes, I know it's you, Slippy. That's why I'm opening fire. Worth the hit. I wanted the bomb. Or was I capped on bombs? Jeez, I don't know. I think I'm addicted to Dyson Sphere Program. I haven't dreamed about a game in a long time. I dream about a lot of games. Play a lot of Tetris. That'll clear it out. Good old Tetris dreams. Dyson Sphere Program is on my watch list, but it has that problem of early access. Never ever early access. I get a lot of mails of uh, games just trying to shill it to me. Like, here's a key for our game. Hint, hint, please play it on your channel. And I, I scour and very often just see the words early access. feel for them, right? Gotta get your game out there. Early access is a way to fund it, but I ain't taking part in that. Is this the level where you fight that robot that says bye-bye? Mm, yes, it is! It's you! Does he say bye-bye in the Japanese version as well? Did you play the Tetris effect they released a few years ago? I probably didn't, because I haven't played a Tetris game in a long, long time. I mean, I played the OG Tetris, of course, NES, Game Boy. Uh, I played the new Tetris for the Nintendo 64, and I played Wet Tricks, if that counts, and of course it does. Love me, Wet Tricks. I can't believe I've never streamed Wet Tricks. Okay, another joke boss. A lot of the bosses are jokes. Which is a shame, because I like this one, but they just die too quickly. That's why the devs should become channel regulars, so they bet their way into a dictator stream you can't turn down their CD key. If I ever found that anything like that was done by a dev of a game, I would probably turn it down. I don't, I don't mind individuals coming in for that, but I don't like the idea of something that insidious coming in. How are the R wings handling? If an amoeba, 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 clings to your ship, L or R, get rid of it. Yeah, I hope it doesn't come to that, but it almost always does. I found this level really weird. It's kind of like being in sea but in space. And I think, I think you got to be careful about what you shoot because some of them will go angry. Ah, Christ! Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you need to shoot them so they don't get angry at you. Scare them off. Anyway, half my health is gone already. So that's not great. This is exactly the level I was thinking of when I earlier said, yeah, I might lose a life or two on this route. And of course, losing a life loses my obnoxiously loud but decent attack. Yeah, that's it. You shoot them and these Moebas um, come towards you. Fortunately, you can grab a health, uh, grab a life rather. And I think you can keep grabbing that, so if you do keep dying on this level, you just keep getting your life back. 
So it wants you to shoot these rockets, but if you miss, the amoebas come and ruin your day. Get away. Also, please recharge my everything. No? Okay. Oh, Christ! Yeah, I think that's one of the things that you're not meant to shoot. Gets angry. Decides that you must die. Okay, so those things, shoot them to make them go away. If they're yellow or orange, and if they're blue, let them be. That's what we'll go with. You ever thought about speedrunning in games? I have given it some serious thought recently. Uh, especially with ESA. I would, I think I'd quite enjoy going to ESA and running a game. But also the idea of running a game until I get it down to a speed level, a level of quality, turns me off in a big way. I feel like I'd lose my passion for it big time. So I, of course, should consider going for a game that I already have, like, autistic levels of passion for. And Draken comes to mind. Especially since I know Draken almost inside out. And it's relatively unknown, so no matter how gash I do, I can just pretend that I'm doing great and very few people will be the wiser. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's it. Beware the big stingray, as in don't shoot it. And I missed the power up, I think it went outside of where I could go to. Draken? Never heard of it. D R A K K H E N? Gosh, now I can't remember myself. Anyway, another Super Nintendo game. It's really bad. It's really, really bad. But there's some nice tricks to. Crivens! There's some nice tricks to get the game done really quickly, despite it being an RPG. Oh my goodness, <laughs> getting ravaged in this level. But this is the problem level that comes to my mind when I think of dying in this game. Because of those accursed stingrays and amoebas. Yeah, hack hack draken. Oh, what's your sh oh you, you slap me around with your big arms, don't you? And I think to beat you I have to shoot into your arms? Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, thanks for the thanks for the advice, Slippy. Let's just be careful. That's fine though. Needed my health back for the boss anyway. I rented Draken when I was a kid. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I wasted five dollars on a of allowance on that piece of garbage. Ah, see, I didn't make the mistake of renting it. Me and my me and my brothers never rented games. Never ever. And coming from a relatively remote part of Northern Scotland, there weren't a lot of people that we knew that had games to borrow them off of, so... Fortunately, we'd go to the bargain bin in... Uh, what was it called again? Virgin Megastore, that's it. Go to the bargain bin in Virgin Megastore and buy what they had. I am getting ravaged on this level. I need to I need to pick it up a bit. So if I recall well, you shoot the you shoot the hands and your bullets travel down the hands and then Okay, or you just get shot to shreds. Come on. That's what I need to do. And keep ourselves safe and pick up health or don't pick up health. <laughs> Can't believe how bad this is going. careful of that big stingray, but little stingray is also a problem. There we go, much better.
So yeah, if I was going to speedrun, I would consider doing Draken. But that's a big if. I think, I'd, I think I'd more just want to attend ESA for the spectacle of it rather than take part. But I'd never hear the end of it if I went there and then didn't take part. Alright, come on, show your hands to me, I'll take you down. God knows how childhood Jake figured this out, but he did somehow. Much better. Frostpunk speedrun- oh god, no. I can't imagine the lack of fun there would be in speedrunning a strategy game. I mean, this- this week, however... Is it this week? Do I have Caesar 3 as my weekly one-shot this week? I'm going to try to beat the game somewhat speedily, but it's not going to be a speedrun. I'm pretty sure people could speedrun Caesar 3 in about an hour and a half. There we go. If there was ever a problem level for this entire run, it was this stage and it's done now. Beat my own taxes in five minutes. I think my own taxes beats me. It's a shame. I really like Mayo for Caesar, uh, for not Caesar three, uh, Europa Universalis three. God, Caesar is still on the mind. I really loved it there, but I don't know. And that love didn't transfer over into Mayo and taxes. There was just too much. sure you saved me there, Slip. When isn't Caesar 3 in it? Well, I mean, I put down Caesar 3 for about two years. When I did my last batch of custom maps in about 2020, I even said, I think I've done everything there is to do in Caesar 3. And then, good old John, Illustra John, comes along, makes some maps that are so beautiful, it just reignites my love for Caesar 3. And now I'm not just playing John maps. I've got a Marek map coming on probably next week, and we've got JB, aka, uh, well I forget their other name, but JB made the map that we played yesterday, and they say they've got other maps on the way. What an exciting time to be alive, except Star Fox here isn't feeling very alive right now. Come on, I meant to be good at old games. Your back slip. Because it isn't helping matters that I'm down to crummy level one lasers. Ah, there we go. It finally happened. One wing down. I won't be upgrading these lasers anytime soon. On top of that, I think you take extra damage if you get hit on the broken wing. Not sure if there's any other downsides to having it down, though. I also don't know if it gets fixed between levels. It gets fixed between lives, but since I have one life, I'd rather not lose more. Crikey. It's alright, though. Have faith. I do. Let's just clear the way a bit, shall we? Ah, this thing. I believe if you give this thing too much time, it actually comes along and physically crushes you. 
Uh, I think it might be trying to do that right now. Uh... Oh, good grief. Goodness, level 2 is kicking my butt. Was there even a halfway mark in this level? Yeah, I think there was. I think we're at it. You're unbalanced during turning, so okay, there we go. Well, at least we got our wing back somehow. Nice of Slippy to keep some reserve R wings for us. Oh, I've got a lot of my own business to mind here, Falco. Was there actually a halfway mark? Feels like I'm doing the whole level again. I need to figure out fast how not to get squished by the end boss there, though. He did shoot those... He did shoot those things at me, though. I need to dodge those. Maybe I only remember the hard mode of this game. Although it would be a bit humbling if I die there as well. Fine though, I've still got zero lives left. That's all I need. Alright, let's have that. Okay, there we go. Done. Am I actually hurting the thing? Well, it ain't hurting me, that's what matters. There we go. Can't crush me anymore. What's it gonna do then? Oh, it's just gonna get out of here. Oh, isn't that a car that you have to chase in some kind of uh, highway level? I choose to believe it is. <laughs> I remember seeing this boss for the first time since Chumro and questioning why two bongo drums were trying to kill me. I thought they looked like drums as well. There we go. Alright, but I also recall this being an easy level to die on, and since I have zero lives left, I really ought to take care. I think this is just like the freeway in Venom, and we're shooting all the commuters. Saving them from a uh, wagey life here on Venom can't be a good one. Whoa! Easy does it now. Interesting anti-speeding initiative to just fill your roads full of obstacles like this. Right, gimme, gimme, gimme. Whoa. Don't crush me now. Did they drop some kind of hula hoop beam thing? That, uh, well, it was only there for a moment, but it looked like a bunch of hula hoops coming at me. Yeah, that thing just there. Easy now. The motorcycle popo of Venom's trying to take us out, but we're mercenaries. 
Good grief. Right, tell you what. Uh-oh. This is getting grim. This is getting really grim. Please don't. Please don't. There we go. Well, I got no health at all, and no lives at all. And I can't remember what this boss does. Oh no, <laughs> this thing just sends out more of them. Well, there we go. I haven't gamed over in this game in a long, long time. Uh, looks like Andros wins the day. Let's go. James, when's the last time I gamed over in Star Fox? Would have been a decade and a half or two decades ago. Good luck. All right, let's go and mess up the freeway one more time. He can still jump back onto easy. Now I said I'd get all four endings, and we're getting all four endings. So, we'll take on hard mode. I'm probably gonna find hard mode to be easier than medium mode. Probably. More familiar to me. Probably fewer things ramming into me as well. Or me ramming into them. I don't know what to do about those biker things though, they just come and ram you from the sides and I can't shoot to the sides. There's no uh no U-turns that we can do. Or what's that what's that maneuver where you just kinda flip around in a in a loop in 64. Okay, if I just keep breaking... No, they're still getting me. They're getting me a lot. Good lord, what do I do against that? Maybe I need to speed up. The continue screen doubles as a model tester. With a controller in the second port, you can change what's in the box. And it, Hey, I seem to remember that. Don't you get a thing where uh, if you press a certain button, it also creates a copy of it? So you can end up seeing a lot of them. That doesn't describe it very well at all. Kind of like the effect when then you beat Solitaire and all the cards bounce out. That's what I remember. Okay, what the heck do I do against these things? Maybe we just gotta go fast. Or we blow them up with our Okay, that didn't that didn't seem particularly effective either. An Emelman loop. That seemed right? Fair enough. Alright. Perhaps I should just ensure that you cease to exist as quickly as possible. Oh! Oh, he's gonna ram me! Absolutely not a fan of enemies and games that just try and ram you. Most... What comes to mind the most when I think of that are Mega Man bosses. The ones that just jump into you and that's their, that's their whole thing. Easy now, easy does it. Right, end it. There we go. Ooh, boy, that was so much harder than I remember.
Yeah, Tarkin. There's not much to the game, so it would be quite a cop-out just to do one ending. Oh, now there's no need for that, Andros. I tried my best. General Pepper has bills to pay as well. Very generous. Bit of health. Fix my wings. Get me some twin blasters. Now this might look awfully familiar. I don't know if the bomb... I have one Nova Bomb. I don't know if it does anything to his eyes or not. But I'm pretty confident it does a lot of damage to his, um, his box form. So out he comes, and away I go, and... Oh, I didn't, didn't kill him in one shot there. Can you even kill him in one shot, uh, one form there? Don't know. May never know. There is a randomizer for this game, believe it or not. I believe it's called Peppy's Tools. But it is nightmare fuel. There's a lot that it randomizes and it just gets really scary. It's hard to explain how scary it is, but it is. You end up flying through glitched areas, your control gets taken away, and the variable frame rate... Oh, it's... It's my idea of nightmare fuel in video game form. Crashes a lot too. It's pretty great, Pepper. New life being breathed into old games. It's real good. Okay, no need to no need to see all this again. Let's just hit that reset button on our genuine SNES. It says version 1.2. Was there a version 1.0 that had issues with it? Right, let's go for the third and fourth endings. Of course, playing on control scheme C, like a heretic. Got more levels here as well. But it's that Fortuna that I remember being the real problem area. A lot of very high damaging creatures. You've chosen course three. A good choice to take Venom by surprise. Yeah. Doesn't indicate that it's the hardest way. Still don't really understand what he's saying there. Any noticeable differences between the versions there, Snake? Anyway, level 3 we get the cool red sky. I think this level's a fair bit longer and harder, but... It's gonna be the version that I'm most used to, so it'll be fine. And I certainly want me those twin blasters. Going without them was a little tricky. Just ram into things from the start, shall we? The one hardest thing to do in this entire game is to beat the training. Because there's a part in it where you have to stay in formation, and that formation is hell on high water to follow. Blast these things down so you don't need to dodge them. And then enjoy the minutes per frame. And what was it we were being told earlier? You could save 20 seconds, or was it a minute by lag reduction on this level alone? I 
can believe it. I got your back, Pappy, don't you worry. Your father helped me like that, too. Taking the center route, could have gotten a bomb there. So there we go. I think the implication there is that Falco's going off to kill the attack carrier himself. But didn't Falco need help at the start of this level? Maybe I was imagining that. But I think these are all the parts for the attack carrier that are being carried away, just as we saw the parts for the boss that we're about to face being carried away on the earlier difficulties. Can hit you with fun knowledge. When you see the checkpoints, it's optimal to sit in the bottom left corner. You skip all obstacles. Eh? Emergency, emergency. Incoming enemy fighters, prepare for... Ah, that makes a lot of sense. Right. Sadly, you can't actually hurt this, uh, hurt this enemy until you take care of the top parts. Otherwise, it just respawns the, uh, the bits in the bottom that are shooting at you, so it's Health will probably increase. Oh, it didn't? What? Is everything I know a lie about this game? Eh, potentially. Well, it doesn't matter. The way these things go. Simple boss. But most of them are pretty simple. Self destructing itself so Canary can't get their hands on Venom technology. Okay, so it respawns the nodes if you destroy them. It doesn't heal them. Well, I certainly remember the respawning part catching me by surprise. Okay, hardest asteroid level. This one's going to have the asteroids with the cheeky faces on them that fly into you. Tractor beam? I don't remember this having a tractor beam. This is what life is going to become, forgetting everything about the games I've played. But I've played so many games, how can that happen? don't know how to consistently dodge the cheeky looking um, asteroids, so we're just going to have to hope that they don't ruin my day. They do a ton of damage though. All these benign ones, the silver and uh, brown ones, they're not going to give me any jib, but the smiling ones certainly will. Give me that. Okay, don't give me that. Eh, no, I don't. I don't actually want that. I mean, I certainly want the bigger, stronger attack, but I don't like the sound of it very much. That bloop, bloop, bloop noise compared to compared to what this does. This is where we're going to have to return to get the fourth ending. Unfortunately, I can't exactly remember where you get it, but I'm sure it'll come back to me when I try for it for real. Gimme, gimme, gimme. And get away from Peppy. I wondered when playing uh, Star Fox 64, if when they were talking about James McCloud and Peppy and all that, I thought they were talking about their adventures in the SNES version, but uh, I don't think that's true. 
I suppose lore-wise, maybe the SNES and the N64 version of the same game. But there was no Space Wolf. Oh, there's the there's the grinning asteroids. How in the heck you're meant to consistently avoid them, I don't know. But they do a ton of damage. And they just like to home in on you. I think you gotta be on one side and then roll to the other. But you can't shoot them and destroy them. They just cheekily come towards you. Oh, your tractor beam. It's more of a web, but sure. So this guy shoots back at you, as in he reflects your attacks. Well, let's get hit by it and see what happens. So you get stuck, and then it starts it starts bringing you in like a... Um, uh, one of those things you have in your sink to grind up old waste. I think America has those. I, I've never seen one myself. In Toy Soldiers, it was used to grind up one of the Toy Soldiers. Yeah, it certainly tries to pulverize you if you get caught by that. A sink blender? I'll go with that. Tries to grind me up like a sink blender, so let's not get caught by those again. Okay, this boss gets easier as time goes on, so he has less openings to shoot you with those rocket things. Wow! To think I did that to myself. Should have gotten the should have gotten the upgrade now. And I think he tries to hit you with his own fan, so let's not get hit by that. And let's see if we maintain our ouchy wing into the next level. America even weaponizing its sinks. Yeah, I've never seen a sink blender with my own two eyes, but I remember seeing it from the Toy Soldiers film. I may have seen one once a long time ago in America, but I might just be imagining it. Garbage disposal is what we call them. I don't understand, though. Why would you even have that? Seems like you're just asking for trouble involving machinery in your sink like that. Alright, Fortuna. There's a lot to love about Fortuna, but I also recall it being a pretty difficult level. And <laughs> we, we've still got our one-winged angel here. It's okay, I only need one wing to fly. Aerodynamics, what are those? Garbage disposals are rare in Europe. I have never, ever seen one. Much like that weird sector from before, I think a lot of the wildlife, dare we call it that, just love to come and hit you. Also, poor Slippy's getting massacred out there. I'll save you, Slip. He also says thanks for the save, which makes me think, is he meant to have some kind of Scottish twang on him? He certainly doesn't in the future games. Oh, good lord, this is, good. <laughs> this is off to a tragic start. Let's uh, thin the herd a bit, shall we? and completely miss the the healing. Okay, well, it's gone bad. And it's gonna get worse. There's these weird dragon heads that pop out of the ground and oh lord, the damage they do. <laughs> Slippy, please. Stay in Great Fox if you're just going to get this ravaged. Oh yeah, we're pretty anti-emote here, Snake. Here are these horrible dragon heads, and yeah, the things they spout out do a lot of damage and cannot be deflected.
Life, please. There we go. Fortunately, I've managed to keep my shield. Don't know how long that'll last. I reckon I'm one shot away from it going away. Wait, The Sims has a garbage disposal? Oh, The Sims has a lot of stuff. Probably a special garbage disposal DLC. I would actually like to stream The Sims a bit. But... What to even do in it? I don't, I don't know. If you try hard, it's not very fun. Oh. There we go. I don't even get the upgraded blaster, I just get my wings repaired. Live your perverted dreams. I mean, I can do that already. Don't need the sims for it. Oh crikey! I'm trying to remember how this thing operates. It smacks you with its head and smacks you with its tail. And it's got a very long tail and two heads, so that's a lot of smacking. Oh yeah, it also sends out these things that ram into you. And I think its weak point is the head. Oh, <laughs> you wouldn't think so the way it smacks you with it though. Okay, I think we're in for a hard time here. There we go, we can have a marginally easier time with Twin Blasters. I don't know if I keep missing all the health. Okay, gotta dodge all the everything. I really think what I gotta do is shoot down the tail. But I gotta be very careful about all those eggs that it cracks out. And then shoot the head. That did nothing. There we go. Smash it, and then right for the head. Both the heads. How's this boss work again? I'm not sure I'm doing much to it here. There we go. It's anyone's guess how any of this is working. Although, for what it's worth, this will give me a lot less trouble than it did Childhood Jake. Childhood Jake had a ton of issues with this monster. Yeah, I think I gotta shoot the heads down and then get small enough to blow that thing up. I'll go with that. With that done, surely no problems coming. Although I think there's another level a whole lot more... Yeah, Sector Z's got a whole lot more of those blocks and things that you gotta dance around. Grabbing the shield I think is quite vital here. Your tomb is doing well for you, thanks. Hope you didn't see what was happening down in Fortuna Pepper. <laughs> Good luck. Also, is he saying that those are his R-wings? We're a mercenary company. I'm pretty sure we brought these in from home. We're certainly expensing them in our company. 
One of my favorite parts in Star Fox 64 is charging General Pepper for your services. And he has a different reaction depending on how much you charge. I think the maximum amount he just says, What? Don't you get the gifted for it to you from the government just like in real life? Sadly, the Swedish government has not gifted me my own private armada of our wings. If it had, I might not be so keen to leave the country. Oh, I didn't want the... oh well. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to endure having the strongest weapon. I might not have them for much longer if I keep taking these crashes. Why? Why are you just standing in the center, not even shooting anything? They must have known what they did with the characters to make them so intolerable in this game. Really liked Falco in Lilac Wars, though. I like the way he ran his mouth. Everyone else is going, "Oh, Fox is so great," and yeah, Falco's having none of it. Falco's probably the better fighter, anyway. Okay, good thing we have the shield for this part, because it's just blocks coming this way and that. Good luck dodging any of this. Bye-bye, shields. Eh, not too shabby. Didn't take any serious damage, although the shields got wiped away like they weren't even there, and we're not even done with the blocks. Scary stuff. Alright, and we're still, still not done with the blocks. This I always thought was so cool. This approach. The music. The sheer look of the thing. Big, blocky and shiny. Easy does it. Let's not lose these wings of ours. Or down, take up. And I like this boss so much before we get to fight it again. The reactor thing. Except I'm having a hard time hitting any of his power thingamajiggers. Just to say I'm not hitting them at all. those weird things at you. I'm not even sure what they're meant to be. They look like miniature versions of the whole thing we just flew into. Oh, I didn't know that happened. If you take too long, those things start powering back up. I got no idea how they pulled this off for the Super Nintendo, but I think it looks so good. Failing to hit these things at all. That's one, and I think the other one's gonna power up before I can hit this. Oh, there we go. Get out of here. You taking good care of my R wings, proceed to just ramming his way through block after block. The R-Wing survived, and so did Fox. Nintendo must have taken inspiration from Star Wars in regards to this boss. It feels and looks like that one scene where they blow up the Death Star. Ah, uh, does it? 
Well, I'm not very savvy with my Star Wars, so I couldn't tell you. Although I did play Rogue Squadron, so I should know. Alright, sadly this Macbeth is nowhere near as good as the Macbeth that we fight in Lilat Wars. But it's still pretty cool in its own Super Nintendo way. Have we really had all those crappy Star Wars Punishment games? We've had one, and it was really, really bad. What was it called? Probably the Force something something. That's all Star Wars is. My Force. Exactly what we want it to be whenever we want it to be anything. why Watto is one of my favorite fat, ugly bastards in history. He doesn't give two hoots about your force. No money, no parts, no deal. Guess I know it's you, Slippy. Get out of my way. On reflection, I should have made this run a run where I don't save any of my cohorts. I didn't even know that was there, I just wanted to fly between these. Oh, I'm remembering a little bit more about this level. I love its boss. Now that I see those um, volcanoes from the sky... Ow. Worth it. I am so glad I keep wildcard segments. If all I did was stream the scheduled stuff, I'd never fit in games like this. But sometimes you wake up and you know that there's a certain game you want to play. And for me, it's Star Fox. does it. Since hurt like hell. Oh, I get it. We're on the interior of the planet. That explains all the rocks and volcanoes clinging from the ceiling. Yeah, I remember this guy. I think he starts dancing in his own way as well. He kind of fans out. He'll jump upside down once I take care of that. So keep a, keep a low profile. Yeah, there we go. How does this work again? Yeah, shoot the core. The core is, the core is covered in these weird, delicious-looking marble things. And he is kicking my ass with them. It's okay. It's okay. There we go. Whew. So far going much better than level two. It's all wild card, always has been. Ah, strategy time. And long play time. And weekly one shot. Those three things gobble up a fair bit of the schedule. That's why it's important to have wild cards. Otherwise, you just become the stream equivalent of Typecast. I really feel for those streamers out there who just have the one game that people ever watch them play, and they feel that that's what they have to do all the time. God, that would be torture. Uh, maybe they enjoy it, but me, I, I couldn't see that being enjoyable. You've made it this far, it's your fate to destroy Andros for a third time. Good luck. Let's do it, Pepper. Level 3. Level 3 Venom's the best, anyway. Just like in Star Fox 64, level 3 is definitely the best. Better than shooting that running giant rock monster from behind. Yeah, the, the, the final showdown with uh, Space Wolf or Star Wolf. That's great. 
Unfortunately, it gets really easy as soon as you figure out how to do a summer. Yeah, somersault. That's it. Oh, you know how to do a somersault. Easy peasy. Somersault, quick turn to the right, and then you just blast Star Wolf to death. And then, yeah, some of them you just shoot to death instantly, especially with upgraded lasers. But I like, I like their dying messages. Andrew does a great scream. The Great Leon says he's too strong. I forget what the th I forget what Pigma says. Pigma the traitor. Yeah, you know what? I don't think we will. Bye bye, Peppy. Hurry up, Fox! I've saved you a dozen times, and what do we have to show for it? Is he dead yet? Don't tell me he survived, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> One less share of the payment! I'm doing this like Nikolai in Resident Evil. No other supervisors may survive. Nikolai's taking all the money. What was his plan to get out of Raccoon City anyway, though? Oh, he had his own chopper waiting, now I remember. In Resident Evil 3, not the god-awful remake. Right, is it boss time? Good. Oh, I like this boss. Sometimes he doesn't like me, though. Whoa. Easy now, I like the shield. Well, I clearly didn't like it enough, because I've lost it now. I remember sitting playing my Super Nintendo, spending a very long time trying to beat this boss. And I still don't think I can do it quickly. So he, he has his vulnerable parts visible for a real short period of time and then you do a forced U-turn, not much of a U-turn, a horizontal U-turn and you gotta somehow hit these. I think it's easiest if you just go okay, not ram into it, that's for sure. I think it's best if you just time a really good bomb to nuke them. Oh, you can soft lock in this boss? That's cool. Okay, that seemed quite effective. It's half dead. But yeah, these tiny, tiny bits that pop up, you gotta shoot them. And that ain't easy. the shield soon if it becomes a battle of attrition. It's a battle of attrition I should win. I'm trying to get the one on the right first though. Come on, appear, 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 appear. It doesn't want to appear. Okay. So how did that go with changing the camera at the wrong time? Does it just soft lock you into the changing camera thing and then you won't be able to attack this thing anymore? never showing that part. I'll go for the left instead. Easy does it now. So I'll ram into the thing again. I think I did a tickle of damage to it. Come on now. Another one down. The boss never showed up again after the U-turn. I just kept going in circles. <laughs> oh, I feel like I want to try that, but I do actually want to beat this game. I did say that I would. Maybe this would be easier if I went into the 
Okay, no, I, I wasn't able to change my flying style. Nice. Okay, the right part is completely destroyed. Next to the left, and we're good to go. Come on, come on, reveal yourself to me. He doesn't want to. He can shoot me from behind, though. Cheeky bugger. The 64 version had a lot less of that, the whole... Oh, there it is! No. The 64 version had a lot less of the enemies that would just come right up to you and shoot you from the side or ram you dead on. It was a better game by just about any measure. Okay, come on, come on. One of us has to go, and it better be you. Reveal thyself. There we go. Don't get greedy. Greed is my modus operandi. I even woke up today thinking about being greedy, and then I loaded up Capitalism Lab. Just to kind of look at it and admire the levels of greed. I still pluck away at that save file every now and then, just making more and more money and bigger and bigger populations. I largely solved the problem of the game of unemployment. You just make factories which have 3x3 three three manufacturing. Each employ 40, uh, 40 units of people. So those soak up unemployment, and they just spam everything else to fill up the cities. And everybody that joins your city is yet another person that will consume. Oh, that lag. It's incredible. Okay, let's get moving through all this, please. Very aptly timed shield at that. Out of the way, out of the way, Hot Rod. I think more interesting than a speedrun, I'd love to see a score maxing run of this game. I think that's far more interesting for the Star Fox games than going for speed. No, no, we ain't helping the slip. The good lord helps those who help themselves. Oh, can we even watch him explode and die in the air? Excellent. None of this. Oh, I'll, I better pull back a bit. It's No, I better go die a bit. Easy now. There we go. Don't you dare. Don't you dare either. Uh-oh. Let's dodge all that. Yeah, it was nice knowing you, Peppy. I don't think Peppy will get hit enough here. Probably only going to take those two hits and then that's that. Which makes me wonder if Falco can ever die then. Does he even have a bogey on his six twice in the game? Whoa. Oh, well, there's one of them. Not happening, Falco. I'm thinking of all the times you saved me and nothing's coming to mind. So that attack carrier that we just shot down is back and battered than ever before. <laughs> yeah, that's all I saw. Get lost, you friend. Love the transformation of the music here as well. You know, if I take this guy out fast enough, this would be a successful two hours of hell. Ow. So when I ran this game in 2014, I ran it as my two hours of hell, and uh, back then, you know, just in case you haven't been around in this channel for like five years or longer, uh, it used to be just the same as the weekly one-shot, except 
I always only had two hours. It was a bit of a limitation of the format. Oh my goodness, could you please, please stop with the marbles? That's why I changed it into the weekly one-shot. It was getting very difficult to find uh, challenges that were only good for two hours. Oh gosh, that's bad. Oh dearie me, right. This is going very bad. Focus on defense first and foremost. There we go. Too close for comfort. So yeah, it was two hours to beat all three endings of the game. Going by my own timer. Got about ten minutes to finish off Andros and we're good to go. I didn't go for the fourth ending back then. Or did I? Probably not. Towers of Hell was amazing. Weekly one shot was a natural evolution. When when did that happen? When when did I stop doing Two Hours of Hell? It was after the 100th one. The 100th one was Silent Hill 2. On reflection, I wish I'd practiced for that. It was the intention, but... Oh! That's bad! Okay. Oh. Oh. Ah, well. Nice knowing you, Andros. I'm sure I've ever game over there before. Oh yeah, the, the wing went and it all went south from there because suddenly all of my all of my flying was off. Pretty hard to fly with a gammy wing. There we go, much better. Cloud. Are these Scottish wolves? Uh, not wolves, foxes. I've seen plenty of foxes in Scotland. Filthy, disgusting creatures. I do not get the fascination with foxes. Well, okay, I can see how they could be regarded as cute, but they're not cute. They are filthy, they are disgusting, horrible, feral creatures. And I really like animals, I like them a whole lot more than people, but foxes, no. The main fascination of foxes is the sound they make. I'm not sure I've heard them making any sound. They're very skittish. Alright. Not sure you can be killed in one barrage here. Maybe it's possible, but it wasn't happening. But I like his little transformation here. That's so cool. He's also a lot easier to hit now because he doesn't have the attacks coming out of his eyes and he doesn't breathe in anymore. Still looks cool, though. And thanks to my barrel rolling, I can just deflect his uh, nasty-looking attacks back. And that should be game, set, and match. If we had a timer going, I'd hit it now. Oh yeah, foxes are pestilence. Okay, this time we can enjoy the ending for real. <laughs> Me and my two compatriots. We're all having frog's legs for dinner. Although some rabbit stew wouldn't go amiss. Frog's legs, I don't think they're very delicious. They really do just taste like chicken, even the texture's not far off. Stereotypically, I had frog's legs when I was in France. A long, long time ago. 
then again, listening to a Brit's take on food, or even worse, a British Swede. Probably not a good idea for anyone. Eh, 93 again? Come in, Cornelia. This is Cornelia, Pepper speaking. Congratulations on a job well done. Roger. I'm heading back to Pepperani actually sounds like you. Never thought about it like that before, but yeah, General Pepper sounds like you. Or you sound like General Pepper. This General Pepper, at least, not the one from the 64 version. But Jake, you're still in France. Wake up. It's been 23 years. That'd be amazing. Waking back up in the 90s. Well, the late 90s. Thing. This thing smacked me good. Hey, I lost fewer lives on the third route than the second. Still feels bad to lose any, though. Don't know why they insist on giving you their their three sizes and yet not giving you any numbers to work with. Is it meters? Kilometers? Feet? Height, weight. No, height, width, depth. In any case, it's a big beast. Do you actually call yourself a Swede? Only if it annoys other Swedes. I like to inform Swedes that I'm every bit as Swedish as they are. Great commander is certainly a great defender. He's hard to beat. I reckon you just need to use a well-placed Nova Bomb to take him out. Oh, his second form almost did me in. But that transformation is so cool! Do you speak more than two words of Swedish? Ah, uh, nay. <laughs> Absolute nay. Okay, well that was all well and good, but these credits are just going to be the same, so ignore them. Let's head over and touch the physical reset button on the console. And time to go for the lesser known fourth ending. Actually, it's probably the most well known ending of the game. To get it, we have to go back into the game and take the third route again. We need to beat Corneria. Which shouldn't be tricky, we did it before. And then we're going to take off from the asteroid area. I have never ordered a Swedish pizza, rested Pandy. Uh, at least not to my home. I think I've been out for pizza a few times, but I don't. I don't think I order them in Swedish. No, if I need uh, pizza ordered to the home, I leave that in Nikki's capable hands. I have never seen a man take so long to order food in my life. It took literally hours. No, there's no hyper bowl there. I think it took two and a half hours for Nikki to order some fast food. I mean, just just when I think Nikki says the most pathetic things ever, he just keeps talking. <laughs> the food was fast, but not Nikki. Oh man, why did I say Slippy again? It's just, just gonna cause me issues. Doesn't even do anything. You, you save them and they just shoot forward ineffectually.
Okay, I think once I'm done with today's stream, I'm gonna have to look up remixes for Canarius Tune. I feel like I've listened to one not too long ago. It was was a well done update on this tune, but I can't remember who by or where I saw it. What is Balabrus saying? Fructans far bra or lagom. Is that Swedish concept lagom? I think it means not too great, but not too bad. Much like Sweden itself. Can leave the attack carry and Falco's trustworthy hands. Kind of think of it. How does he fly his ship? He's got wings. Actually, well, Fox has paws, right? Jake's Swedish quota for the year. Well, actually, I was in a shop yesterday, and I thought, you know what, just for the hell of it, let's use my incredible Swedish, because I, I know I know what to say here. So I went, and I asked for the thing in Swedish, and they just instantly replied in English. I was like, oh, okay. So I just kept going in Swedish, and they just kept going in English, and it, it felt like some kind of parody of life. So when people ask me why don't you why don't you learn Swedish, it's like why why bother? If it was useful to my life in any way, I would consider it. But it is not. But that's the thing, in Sweden, if you get clocked as an English speaking foreigner, they'll just instantly speak English to you. Happens all the time in Quebec, but with French. As in they'll start speaking French to you? My experience in France is that the French don't give two hoots what language you should do or don't speak. They will speak to you in French and demand that you do the same back. What is it Weird Al says? They're snotty and rude, they like disgusting food. But when they're with me they just come unglued. Okay, so this is where we unlock the fourth ending to the game. I just have to remember how, which means if I can't remember how, I'm going to be purposely game overing here. I think I just need to shoot one of the big asteroids, but which one, I don't know. No Anglophone tries to speak French, the Francophone switches to English at the hint of an accent. Well, that is the exact opposite of my experience in France. Surely you've been to France, Baron? I could not imagine being a French speaker and not having been to France. It'd be a mockery of God's creation. Okay, I don't think it's that asteroid. Is it this asteroid? Yeah, I don't think... Oh, that was it! Sweet, I got it. That was close. I almost didn't got it. Come here, come here, come here. Eat me, eat me. Stop trying to eat me and eat me. There we go. So there was an egg inside that asteroid, which spawns some giant creature that somehow teleports you to this area. It was not previously on the map. I don't know how you were meant to figure this out. I guess you just shoot things and eventually this happens. That'll be how I found it all those years ago. No internet back then to tell us how. Come in, Arwings. Fox, where are you? We need you to protect Corneria. Good luck. Well, it's nice of... Uh, Nice of General Pepper to still wish us good luck. So, this is the other dimension. It's a strange place where origami reigns supreme. As an American who knows passable German, I found that Germans appreciate my attempts to start with German, but the conversation went anywhere complex, they switched to English. They're very nice like that. But sometimes you don't want nice. Sometimes you want to go to a country to experience that country, not uh, godforsaken attempts at... What would the word be? Metropolitan? In France, I shocked them by being able to speak French after they heard me speak English. Yeah, that'll be it. 
They're not used to that. They think Le Boeuf Stack only knows one language. And most of the time they're right. Is this what colors smell like? Well, I know that Corneria now smells like atomic fire. We're not done yet, though. This isn't just flying through air, shooting paper airplanes. Looks like one bad trip, though. I can imagine this gave some people nightmares. Still impressive that the Super Nintendo was able to do this, though. So early in its life cycle as well. These kind of innovations on a console you can see coming out later in it, not earlier. Take the PlayStation 2, for example. Compare a launch title with a, a late in its life title. Performs so much better. Does even better things. Not always more innovative, though. Then again, you get games like Final Fantasy X. Wasn't that a launch title on the, on the PlayStation 2? Phenomenal. I still get blown away by Final Fantasy X's graphics. And not just graphics, but the visuals. It's not about not all about fidelity, sometimes it's just what you do with them. It's hard to find somewhere where nobody knows a word of English. Uh, I don't think so. A rural Mongolia safe bet. Okay, so this is the real final boss of Star Fox the Super Nintendo, aka Star Wing. And we wonder why I got so into gambling. It's a one-armed bandit! You shoot the one arm, it goes through these, and uh, what do we get? Okay, okay, thank god. <laughs> I thought it was going to uh, give me triple seven there, which would have ended this immediately, so no thank you. Oh no, 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 no. Thank goodness. Well, let's go for it anyway. That would be phenomenal luck to get triple seven. Normally you're here for a while. Big win! Give me the coins! Mmm! Keeps teasing me with the sevens. If you get the Andros faces, you get some nasties. And then it starts shooting you. More, uh, more one-armed bandits should be doing this. I never gambled one-armed bandits. Seems, seems like a bad idea. I don't like gambling with machines, because machines are just programmed to take a certain amount of money each day. Well, mechanized things I don't have such a problem with. Things that aren't at least somewhat intelligent. Oh no, not Andros again. No! My goodness, the multi uh, Andros is. Uh, whoa, 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 no, I shouldn't have stuck on one Andros there. Those fixed odds. You just know those fixed odds better terminal are. Oh, betting terminals are anything but. Yeah. Oh my goodness, he's still stuck there? I'm just gonna get a. Quadruple bill of Andros here. And it's playing its rendition of When the Saints Come Marching In, I believe. There we go, get Andros's face off of there. Oh my god. <laughs> I've never had such bad luck on one of these things before. Nothing but Andros. It's Andros all the way down. I'm surprised this got through. Normally you're not gonna see gambling or booze on a Nintendo game. There we go. Give me that. I need the 
Need the money. Money restores my health in this game. Yeah, Blackjack has a very low house edge, but that's assuming you play perfectly. And a lot of people don't play perfectly. Even I don't play perfectly, and I love Blackjack. And money. Sometimes you get that feeling in your gut that says the perfect option is not the right thing here. Oh my goodness, please. Please, Andros, enough. He who owns the gambling owns the lilac system. Alright, let's save ourselves those juicy sevens. No! Don't know how that counted as a one-armed bandit hit. That could have been my triple seven there. Oh no, he's back! He's doubly back! This is abusive. I'm surprised I've still got both my wings. And I won't for much longer. Okay, let's not save any of that. Nintendo have a proud history of letting gambling through. Well, there was the gam... No! <laughs> Stay away! Right. Let's save you. Oh, right, because I have double beam. One of them's hitting that, and the other just hits the machine itself. They let that game corner through in Pokemon, and that was great. Oh, I love gambling in the game corner. Who didn't? It was such a shame that it wasn't in Radical Red. Oh, hello, Andros. In uni, I had a part-time job counting cards in blackjack at a local casino to train dealers on how to recognize it. Best $10 an hour I ever made. Well, depending on when that is, $10 an hour for that doesn't sound too bad. But sometimes I forget just how weak the dollar is. And again, I've worked for 2 quid 70 an hour. Ugh. Never again. And then again, I don't know how much I make per hour streaming. I'd probably be too terrified to calculate it. Come on, triple seven. I know I pooed the idea of getting you earlier on, but now I'm not so dismissive. I don't know if this is entirely RNG or if there's a hidden health bar in this thing that. It needs to pay out a certain amount before it'll let you win. But I feel like I've never won this slowly before, and I've certainly never had as much Andros rolling on this as, as I have here. Minimum wage for apprentices is 4 quid 81 an hour these days, that's pretty grim. The flip side there is it's generally accepted that you're learning a trade with that. Still, though, that is grim. That's not something anyone's going to live off of. Two quid seventy in a Victorian mind would be a fortune. Inflation is crazy. Isn't it just? But that's why you play games like Capitalism Labs. Give yourself a sense of grounding in just how inflation is. That feels like it. Ah. Uh. On seven. Lucky number. Oh, So close and yet so far. We will win this. As long as we keep getting paid out, we'll always be okay. <laughs> the Saints are going to march their last. I don't think so. Wow, I don't get anything for that. I wonder... I don't even know where all these things come from. Stars, fair enough, those are ubiquitous, but cherries, watermelons, bars? I feel like there's a history here that I am not privy to when it comes to one armed bandits. <laughs> when I was young, my parents got me a one armed bandit, but it was actually a savings machine. 
You were meant to put in coins to uh, to use it. Oh god, no, Andros, stay away. It was fun though, but I've always loved gambling. And the reason is Aberdeen Beach. Cadona's, I believe it's called. Full of gambling machines for kids. It was so good. God, Andros, stop. Two penny falls, ten penny falls. Horse race thing. Oh, horse race thing I loved. You could bet on the horses. There was red, blue, yellow, green, and... I think black was the best one. Black had a payout of something like 50 to 1. Speaking of payout, we did it! Cost us one of our wings, but we did it. But now we get the credits, but wait, it's a little different this time. We can fly through it? Thank you, Hiroshi Yamauchi. Every British beach reminds me of that pleasure island in Pinocchio. I, d I don't... I don't believe for a second they can make money off of those two penny falls. It must cost more money to run them than what little they skim off the sides. I love playing them though. Interestingly, I'm going to be back in Aberdeen soon for the first time in God knows how long. In fact, uh, how, how, how long has it been since I've been in Aberdeen? Like, properly in Aberdeen. I don't think I've ever actually properly been back since I moved to Edinburgh. I never lived in Aberdeen. Well, I suppose I did. I was a student there for a while, but... Even if I go back to Scotland, I don't tend to spend any time in Aberdeen. But I've heard the whole place has gone to hell, so I'm keen to find out exactly how bad it is. But I reckon I'm going to go down to that beach and I'm going to... Well, as a kid, I'd get like 20 or 50 pence worth of two-penny coins to play with the two-penny fall machines and the horse betting for as long as I can stay distracted for. But now... Oh, I'm going to take out a whole quid's worth of two-penny coins and go to town. I hope to God it's still there. <laughs> what if it's gone? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back paint Aberdeen red. I hope that Brazilian restaurant is still there. Same with the Hungarian one. Okay, this is what it's all about. The real end boss is to shoot these and make them spell out the end. Unfortunately, whilst you try and do it, all these uh, enemies come and knock the uh, knock them apart for you. And you gotta make sure you shoot the right ones. Oh, well. Please, please no. Okay, I don't have any wings anymore. That's okay, we don't need wings where we're going. Oh god, I need health where I'm going though. I don't wanna have to do the, uh, don't wanna have to do the one-armed bandit again. No, don't ruin my end! I've got everything where I need it. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Please stop. Just the D, just the D, just the D, just the D, and the E. Ah. Just the D, come on. Come on. One more. This hurts. This is about to hurt a lot more. No! <laughs> Come on! God, this level is all about the gamble. There we go! And our reward for doing that... ...is being able to do it again. For eternity. This is actually, truthfully, a horror game. Star Fox is now stuck in here forever, unable to save the ones he loves. Forever just spelling out the end. Whilst the saints go marching in. That was some Tesla City level RNG. I was actually rewatching one of my Frostpunk runs last night. Hard to believe I 
knew that game so well, I dread to think how bad it would be going back to it. There we go. So, that's your lot. That's all the Star Wing that we have in store for us today. Great game. Well, maybe not, but I certainly have a lot of nostalgia for it, and it felt good to revisit it. And the big reason I wanted to come back to this was thanks to our weekly one-shot of Descent, which was a whole lot of fun. Okay, it doesn't even want to kill me, does it? What a shame. Yeah. Alright, so stream's gonna go down, and I will be back this evening with some Hearts of Iron 4, perhaps a bit more meaningful playing than Star Fox here. So, until we're back with Axis Aran's groveling and begging for other people's superior equipment, it's a cheers and a... and a... I was going to say cheers and a the end, but it doesn't want to spell out, does it? Of course not.